Hi guys, welcome back to Iron Griffin Studio. My name is Alan. This week I've been making this little mini project here. A water cistern, bath, fountain, whatever you want it to be really. You can kind of change yours however you like it. But yeah, this is kind of a bit of a multifunctional piece. You often get cisterns, these kind of big water traps in, uh, in dungeons and castles and things like that. So yeah, really handy. Some nice little water effects there in the middle as well. So let's crack on, shall we? All right, so first things first, we're gonna need a little bit of XPS foam. These are just some three by four inch pieces of 10 millimeter thick XPS. And I'm gonna use two of these for the kind of outside walls. I need to cut out this middle piece here. So I'll do that on the Proxon. All right, now with the middle cut out, I've obviously had to kind of slice through the side a little bit just so I can get to the middle using the Proxon hot wire table. But uh, it's pretty easy to cover that up. We can just cover it up with a, like it's a brick line, you know, in the side of the, uh, the cistern wall. And we can uh, make sure that that's all glued together nice and tightly. I also need a small base for this. So I found a, a small off cut of XPS foam. It's quite thin, it's only a few millimeters thick. And I just wanted to uh, size it up for the bottom and then cut out the, the edges so that the central piece would just fit nicely in the inside the cistern walls. And using a little bit of hot glue, I just stuck the wall layers together and then stuck both halves it together as well using a flat workbench there to level it on and then once that glue was dry which didn't take very long at all just used my hot glue gun to kind of secure the base piece uh, against the walls of the cistern obviously you really want to make sure that this part is sealed quite well because it's going to have some epoxy resin in it very soon and you don't want that to to leak out so here i'm just gonna put a little bit of hot glue along the seams and then run your finger across it which hurts a little bit because it's hot but it's fine and you know just if you've got a parent or adult then ask them once that was done I added a bit of a brick texture all around the edges as you can tell here I didn't measure a single thing I just eyeballed all of this and it looks pretty okay considering And I used the lid of a spray can here on some XPS foam just to make a little archway for the back of this kind of cistern wall. And this is going to be the part where the water spout kind of stands. I then took another piece, this time one that was square, and I added some brick texture to the back. Uh, again, I eyeballed pretty much all of this, didn't measure anything. Just wanted a, a nice little bit of texture to sort of show uh, underneath the archway, just to give it a little bit of depth and uh, and kind of interesting form, I suppose. And then added some kind of form and texture and brick pattern to the archway a bit, just to uh, hopefully help it match the previous piece there that is going to sit on top of. And then I used some hot glue to glue the archway onto its backing. Now I needed a bead for the spout. So I went into the beads box, I found this little guy and just hot glued him to the back wall. Now I give it a good undercoat with some Mod Podge and black paint over the entire thing. And then once that was dry, I went over it with a pretty heavy dry brush, an overbrush if you like, of a medium grey paint. This covered pretty much the entire thing as well. I 
painted the spout a nice copper color and you'll see as well I also painted some bricks in the kind of uh, burnt sienna and a little bit of tan and that just helped them stand out and break up that kind of boring gray color and then I added the multifunctional wash to everything this is, this is a mixture of black and brown wash with a little bit of water in it and it goes over the whole piece and really helps tie all those colors together and makes it look a lot more natural I took some nylac oxide citadel paint and I applied it to the spout to give a nice patina to the copper making it look a little bit more weathered I found this little strip of UV resin from a previous project uh, so I figured I'd use it here and I just wanted to glue it onto the spout so that it would act as a little water stream Now wherever it's damp you always get moss so I use these products here for moss mixed with a bit of PVA glue I'm just gonna spread this around in various places I tend to uh, use it <laughs> quite a lot where the hot glue kind of squeezes through between the uh, the pieces of XPS form just to hide those mistakes I mean you know there's no harm in doing that and then I moved on to the scary bit this is the two-part epoxy resin and just added a little bit of a, a bluish green tint to that using some acrylic paint and then I'm just going to pour this into the system and then I let that stand overnight But as you can see, I actually left it on some baking paper and uh, it was a good job I did because the underneath, it looked like a little bit has leaked out through some tiny little gap in the XPS form. But thankfully it's all hard now and ready to add a little bit of gloss Mod Podge to the surface to add a little bit of a, a dynamic uh, kind of flowing water. And you can use this stuff pretty liberally, like it, 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 it's going to dry completely clear and you want enough on there that you can make some nice ripples in the surface. And using a super fancy Mod Podge distribution tube, I'm going to blow the uh, Mod Podge around the surface to create some nice turbulent water. Are slightly more turbulent just a little bit more dynamic so that it isn't you know glass flat and then i'm going to blow some ripples into the area where the water stream meets the water level as you can see there once it's all cured and you can see those ripples there in the light as it hits it this but you just want to kind of pick those highlights out a little bit so i'm going to use a dry brushing method with a bit of white paint and just go over very very lightly against some of these ridges in the water go lightly on this bit you can always add more but you can't take it away so just put a little bit on have a look at it see if it looks okay if you need a bit more on then add a bit more And lastly, I just want to put a few little candles. I printed these out on the 3D printer. I'm just gonna stick these on the corner of the system to add a little bit of detail. Painted those up with some yellow and then a little orange tip on the candles and I did it, a bit of a sepia wash to the white and that finished the whole piece. All right, guys, there you have it all finished. I'm pretty uh, pleased with the way it turned out. Um, water effects is always a bit of a, a funny one. I'm using this at the moment. This is, um, I mean, it's quite a cheap brand. It's just off Amazon and uh, it's, it's working really, really well. Just as good, I think, as the kind of leading brands and things like CFS and whatnot. Uh, obviously, this is a one-to-one -one mixture. It's pretty simple. You can't mess it up. Uh, and uh, yeah, really useful and it dries kind of crystal clear and uh, very hard and 
in pretty good time, I would say. So yeah, I would definitely recommend uh, grabbing some of that if you can. Uh, I am on Instagram. If you want to check out my Instagram feed there, I post occasional pictures of models and projects from whatnot from around the workshop. And I am also on Patreon. Feel free to check that out if you feel like supporting the channel financially. That is the best place to do so. I'm eternally grateful for these fine men and women here uh, who support me already. And uh, I mean, you guys are the best. And thank you very much for all your, your financial support and anybody else who signs up uh, as a result uh, of this video. Um, that's it for this one though. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for stopping by and happy grafting.